Looking back at Baltimore and also looking ahead, the prosecutors, as you know, late Friday, they charged six Baltimore police officers with the crimes that range from murder to assault and the death of Freddie Gray. That was the 25-year-old African-American whose death last month of injuries apparently suffered in a police custody, touched off a first peaceful protest and then um, a night of rioting, some ongoing unrest, looting, chaos, etc. That is now wound down, curfew lifted, National Guard um, stands down in the state of Maryland um, and in Baltimore City. So where do we go from here? Is, uh, it, does it look, does it appear that justice um, is going to prevail in this case um, with quick charges that were handed down by the district attorney? Uh, joining us this morning to discuss criminal defense lawyer, he's a former U.S. Navy judge, advocate general, lieutenant commander, and uh, an expert in military justice here, which doesn't exactly apply specifically, but certainly the overall realm of how justice um, moves forward does. Brian Buford. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Dave. How are you? I'm doing very well. So uh, w- when you look at where we stand right now, first of all, let's go back to the charges um, coming down. We were told it's going to be a long investi- investigative process, no stone unturned, etc. cetera. Um, charges then were proffered very quickly uh, by this uh, district attorney. Uh, did that surprise you at all? You know, on, on one level it does. Uh, when, when charges are, are, are brought so quickly, obviously there has been a lot less time to do a proper investigation. And so, you know, as a criminal defense attorney, that's, that's something that, that would certainly pique my interest that, that the charges were brought this quickly, uh, particularly charges that are this serious. So I, I suspect, as I think we all do, that the, the reason for that is to quell unrest. Mm-hmm. And and that does appear to you know have, have occurred at this point. Now that you know they may end up reaping the whirlwind if these officers aren't convicted, and and you can tie it to the fact that they they moved a little too quickly. There that, was that's further down the road, Brian. There was discussion here immediately after, and with the press conference and and amongst uh, those who who follow this very closely on the ground, reporting that that this was as much about what these officers didn't do as what they did do. Um, with this uh, young man in custody, uh, someone who is a criminal defense lawyer and has to defend in a court of law, um, th- that presumption of what you your job is and what you should have been doing versus any action you actually committed, how difficult is that going to be for the state to prove? Well, I, I think you've touched on the very issue that, that really turns this more into, in, in my opinion, a manslaughter situation uh, than a murder situation. Although, uh, in, in Maryland, unlike you know a lot of other states, they, they have a second-degree theory of murder called depraved heart murder, which right. is what they've charged uh, Officer Goodson with, the driver of the, the driver van. The driver of the van, right, yeah. But, but essentially, in, in, in most other states, that's, that's just a, a, a very high form of manslaughter. In other words, a depraved heart murder does not require an intent to kill, but it requires that, that the, the actor, that the Officer Goodson in this case, was taking such an extreme risk... That, that someone could die, that uh, that the risk was so great, and that he knew or should have known that that uh, they can they can charge him with the second degree murder. So um, I don't think anybody is alleging that the officers intended to murder, intended to to kill Freddie Gray, but they all behaved in such a way where it, it, it appears to be clear, or at least it's clear on the evidence, that, that they didn't didn't give you know the slightest care about his well being. Once they, the, once their pictures were out, their mug shots and everything, there, there seemed to be. Oh, so we have three white officers, three African American officers, and that changes. That does change the dynamic with the case somewhat in terms of public opinion, does it not? Well, it might. Um, you know, I, 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 you, know, you kind of go around uh, in this, and, and you, you, it, you don't want to just say, well, you know, somebody's somebody's white, so he or she is going to always behave a certain way, or somebody's black, sure, so they're no, going to always right, right, behave right. a certain way. But uh, but I do think that you know we, we see it in in, in uh, the, the Greek system in college we see it in, in in the military and we certainly see it in in police departments that when you become a, a member of a a quote unquote brotherhood there's certainly a lot of pressure to behave the way that your your brothers want you to behave and so I think that the the, the skin color of these officers to me is a red herring I think they're 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 police officers first. And uh, and either you know minorities or whites the second. The uh, the the attorneys who will be representing these officers in the days and weeks to come. Do you expect there'll be a lot of um, close consultation amongst them, or 
will this be the kind of a case, as some, happens on occasion, where, you know, everybody kind of goes off and does and does their own thing, the, uh, they're represented um, singly, et cetera, and, and there's, there's not a lot of crossover. What, what kind of defense do you expect and mixture of defense do you expect in this case? Well, I, I think that this all happens so fast that it, it, it seems to me uh, unlikely that there's going to be one officer who would, would have a lot of information and could testify against the other officers for a, right. you know, for a better deal, which is something that you often see right. in multi-defendant criminal cases. You know, there's oftentimes, there, there, you know, uh, depending on the situation, there might be a, a rush to the prosecutor for some, you know, to be the first person to get a good deal. I don't really see that happening in here because, number one, the, the events took place so quickly. And number two, there was nobody else in the back of that van seeing what was going on during the hour trip, you know, only until the very end when they stopped for the fifth time and let another uh, prisoner on the van, which my understanding is that, that Mr. Gray was already either unconscious or dead at that point. So, uh, you know, all, all we see really is, are, are the actions of Officer Goodson, and, who was the driver, and then all of the officers who ignored Mr. Gray's request for, for medical attention and certainly didn't do what I think a minimally decent officer would do, and that is buckle this poor man in the back, in the back of the van so he doesn't slide around. Brian, before we let you go, does it seem like the uh, the wheels of justice are turning here and this will both diffuse the situation and result in, in what we would hope would be a proper um, verdict after um, the evidence is seen? I, I think we always hope that, and, and unfortunately in, in recent uh, weeks and, and months and, and years and decades, we, we don't always have a mm. good reason to hope for that, but I still do. All right. Uh, Brian Buffard is a criminal defense lawyer, formerly a U.S. Navy Judge Advocate, General Lieutenant Commander, joining us this morning talking about the Baltimore case going forward will be interesting indeed. Thank you, Brian, for being here. Thank you, Dave. Take care.